At the meeting, members of Hashtag Shut It All Down presented a national plan of action with four action areas that will look into the protection, care and dignity of the survivor, safety nets, transformative youth engagement and adequate data for funding. Youth leader at the forefront of hashtag shut it all down, Berta Tobias revealed a lack of sensitivity and empathy training from first responders and inadequate SGBV public education amongst other focus points within action area one of its SGBV national plan of action. So what that practically looks like is a young woman running into a police station and she's been stabbed and she is crying. Um, and and there's, there's jokes being made about it, or young men running into police stations and they're being blamed because they are not real men, uh, quote unquote, or they're, 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 there's a perpetuation of toxic masculinity as well, which then discourages young men from speaking out as well. But the operative issue here is the, the importance of, of, of implementing empathy training as a fundamental and consequential component in dealing with uh, sexual and gender-based violence victims and or cases and responding to them in a way that is encouraging of more reporting and in a way that speaks to the fact that we are all here um, effectively to support uh, uh, women uh, in, in, in situations like that. So secondly, we're also talking about the sexual orientation, gender identity and expression and sex characteristics. And that really speaks to, as Dilo has explained as well, the importance of intersectionality um, and acknowledging that there's different social political identities or social political components of those identities um, in addressing SGBV and then the importance of having those conversations. Also at the forefront of hashtag shut it all down is Ndilon Tengwe, outright Namibia's advocacy and communications officer who called for interministerial law reform and introduction within the justice and gender ministries. Additionally, the SGBV National Plan of Action also observes safety nets and community care, primary prevention and upgrade, women economic empowerment, and training of religious leaders. We believe that it should not rely only on the Minister of Justice to come up or to create or design or you know, launch any kind of you know, new laws and acts. It should also be part of the, the Ministry of Gender's uh, mandate to also then identify those areas and those gaps in which it can become an interministerial law reform and not one specific entity or you know institution that does that. And then on that note, we want to touch on two specific ones that would like to also be something of a party, in which we look at the hate speech, the criminalization of misogyny already, what that might look like, for example, because we know that misogyny is the intentional contempt or disdain or disregard of another gender of women. So what would the criminalization of misogyny look like? The other is the silence on SGBV Act. This is, these are just ideas. So we know that in, 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 in specific institutions, in specific areas, silence culture is quite rampant. And if we then criminalize silence that is related to SGBV, that is now when people would be much more aware and say, okay, but I'm not supposed to be quiet on this because it's illegal, specifically to SGBV. Or I'm not supposed to talk about women or any gender minority people in this specific way because misogyny is criminalized already. So those are the kinds of, uh, those kinds of ideas that we'd like also to, to engage and begin to also see how that can be implemented. The movement further stressed the urgency of the matter, further calling on the Ministry of Gender to step up to the plate and be at the helm of driving SGBV issues that relate to the law, adding that should the dialogue fail, the protests will continue. If this whole conversation were to fail, and if dialogue is going to fail, then people are going, we're going to go back to the streets, and we're going to continue uh, uh, protesting. Because it is urgent, um, and if there's one thing that's ever needed urgent attention, it's been this, because every single day, women are dying once again. Um, so that just means that right now there's a conversation once again to hold each other accountable uh, to implementation, to doing the actual work after this, to doing whatever work in, what needs to be done and to, start, to, to sort of uh, accelerating and supporting one another's efforts. And if that fails, and if at any point in time there's inaction of, or a lack of urgency, then the protests will continue until we decide to do something collectively because we can't keep waiting for someone else to become the next hashtag.